Hello and welcome to the Daily Millwall for Monday, the 19th of December 2022. In today's Millwall news, we've been linked with a player on loan, and it's kind of a weird one. Um, this is the story this is that I'm showing you is from Inside Football, F U T F B O L dot com. Inside Football. Um, but it's all over the place because they're re-reporting um, the original source, which is our old friend, Alan Nixon. And more on that as we read the piece here. So Crystal Palace could cut Star's loan short amid Mill and Sheffield Wednesday interest. Crystal Palace are reviewing Starlet Jezurun Raksaki's loan at Charlton Athletic and he has interest. From a host of clubs, including Sheffield Wednesday and Millwall, according to journalist Alan Nixon. Raksaki went on loan to Charlton in the summer and has so far impressed for the Haddocks in his stint at the Valley. However, Charlton are in turmoil, having not won in 90 minutes since early November, finding themselves 18th in League One and just four points above the relegation. Oh, okay, so we're gonna play. We're trying to loan a player that's playing in the team that's shit in League One, are we? Now, that's on the face of it, as you as you see it there. Obviously, doesn't mean he's to blame for that. Manager Ben Garner has been sacked by Charlton. His successor has not been appointed. All of which has sent alarm bells ringing at Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace are now contemplating on whether to cut short Raksaki's loan at Charlton and send him to a different club in January. Uh, the championship could be one possible destination for him, with Millwall keen to keep him within London. Old City are also keen. However, he could remain in League One as Sheffield Wednesday and Ipswich Town are also firm admirers, although he would be fighting at a different end of the table as compared to Charlton. Raksaki has missed just one match this season in League One for Charlton, Scoring five goals and assisting two times, but his time there could be up soon. So, like they said, uh, Charlton is struggling, and he's been a never present in that Charlton team that's struggling. So, I'm not going to point the fingers at him, but what does that say? Um, well, let's find out. Let's have a look at. So, this is the Charlton page from WhoScored.com. We're going to have a little look. And we're going to see, and you can see here, these are the players, the Charlton squad, and he is the second highest rated player according to this website, who scored.com, on 6.95. But if you look at the player who's number one, he's only had one appearance, so that's, that could be a fluke. That might be in against a relegation team, uh, it might have just been a, a good day. So if you Take it out and see, okay, over a certain number of games, Jezuron Raksaki has been their best rated player. He has started 18 times, uh, scored five goals, two assists, one yellow card, 2.2 shots per game, which is very good, quite high. Um, that's kind of like up there with um, Zion Fleming style of uh, shots. Uh, not very good on the aerials, 0.3 aerials one per game, but that's fine. 82.9% passing ac accuracy for a forward that is also very good, especially over the length of 18 games. Uh, he's been man of the match twice, so let's have a look at these matches. His birthday is in October, 5th of October. He's attacking midfield of right. Uh, so this is what he has done. Uh, this is what he's done this season. Uh, one start and one sub appearances in the FA Cup, but that's not rated on this website. The League Cup is though, for some reason. Um, one appearance, one sub appearance, 131 minutes, one assist, rating of 6.87. Of course, Charlton this week have the big uh, game um, against. I think it's home against Brighton. Uh, they got a is it quarter final of the League Cup, so if he plays in that, that will probably be the highlight of his career so far in terms of the highest level game that he's played in. So that will be a real test if any Millwall scouts are looking to take him on loan to watch that game and see how he does 
in that game if indeed he does play in it. Uh, now, of course, the 18 appearances in League One that we've just seen, he's a rating of 6.95. Uh, if we go through and look at the defensive stuff, um, he's mainly a forward, so let's see what he does up front. Uh, there's his numbers there if you want to have a look at them and see yourself. Doesn't get offside that much because I think he's one of these players who gets on the ball and runs at teams. He runs with the ball, dribbling and stuff. Um, passing, uh, it does. It's not really a crosser either. Not by three crosses per game. Um, okay, so interesting stuff there. So if we skip past this video of that Argentinian man, and you look here and see this, so this is what he's been doing this season for Charlton as a what would you call it? Outside right. Uh, 8 appearances, 3 goals, 2 assists, 7.21. So that's his best position, playing high and right. Uh, you can also play on the right wing, 6.92. Uh, that's his second best position. Uh, they played him on the left and in the middle, obviously not very good. Um, so, there you go. His strengths and weaknesses, which you would imagine. Aerial duels and defensive contribution, yes. Dribbling, very good. Finishing, very oh, good. Uh, passing, good. He likes to dribble, he likes to cut inside, he likes to play short passes. He gets fouled often, he does not dive into tackles. Sounds pretty decent, to be honest. So here's his latest matches, but we're going to have a look at this uh, match history of these from Uscore.com. So these are his 18 matches that he's played for, and a few more cup games. Um, so if we start off at the beginning of the season, which is at the top, um, first game, first impressions, um, seems uh, to hit the ground running, 8.44 rating, he played 63 minutes, he scored a goal, and maybe they won 5-1 at home against Plymouth, um, they eased him in, 60 minutes in the next game, 10 minutes in the game after that, which was a League Cup game, um, And then after that, again, his next best performance, 8.07 against Wickham Wanderers away. Got man of the match, got a goal, got a yellow card. Um, so good stuff there. He's got the assists here as well. Um, but you can see. If you go down to the bottom and look, he hasn't been playing a lot recently or he hasn't played the 90 minutes a lot recently he had a spell in the mid in october november he played the 90 minutes and he's kind of fell off is he getting the blame for uh, the results because if you go from the bottom and go up they haven't won when he's played if we take out the stevenish cup game which was on penalties uh you have to go all the way to shrewsbury game in uh 22nd of October of the 10th, 22, when he scored a goal, got man of the match, 7.58. Since then, he hasn't been on the winning team in the Charlotte side. So, obviously, something's gone on there. I don't know what's going on. Charlton, uh, I know a lot of uh, Mill fans seem to have a kind of rivalry with Charlton. I don't really give a shit, to be honest. Um, I don't live out that way, so I'm, I'm not that way. And it's probably the most one-sided rivalry uh, derby in the history of derby. We beat them all the time. It's it's not even it's not even a, a fair contest. I mean, you feel sorry for them after a while when they keep losing to us. Um, they keep turning up. They feel the away end, and they sing their songs. And it's 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 uh, kind of embarrassing after a while. Um, but, uh, yeah, so there you go. This is, uh, Jesse Run Bakasaki's matches for Charlton this season. And apparently we are interested in him. Which begs the question, what's going on at the club then? Why are we buying these young, quick, forward players? Um, we bought... Adu Maku, um, reports of us getting Josh Kia, 
we're trying to get this guy on loan as well. So if he comes on loan, I'm, I don't think it's a loan looking for like oh, um, he might be leaving Crystal Palace next season, loan him, see if he's any good. No, I don't think he's, he's he is a prospect. He is one who could have potential. Um, he although he is twenty years old, so that's quite hard for for a Premier League team, someone to break into that, that kind of level. Um, but you see, though, they loaned him out to a League One team. He's done all right. Um, they probably were, they didn't expect him to, to do this well, probably. So now they're thinking, well, okay, let's get this, hurry up and do this, because you're 20 years old and we need to move this on. Uh, time is a ticking, tick, tick, tick. So let's get you in the championship, especially we can use the excuse of Charlton being a bit of a basket case and, uh, we can get you in the in the uh, in our situation. Um, so with the new formation that we're playing now, has our tar target changed? I think a lot of the fans still think we need a centre forward. Bradshaw isn't good enough. Score running around a lot and scoring a hat trick every twenty games isn't isn't, isn't what we need. We need someone who's going to make. A lot of goal contributions. Okay, he had the assist the other day. How many of us? How many assists has he got this season? Not many. And he he's the plan B. Benekafos was plan one, plan A. He's plan B. Bogusama. So obviously, are we trying to sign this guy on loan so Bogusama can be the backup centre forward? Because he's not really an outside right, is he? He's not quick enough. So if we Bring Raki, uh, Raksaki in. He can play if if he's good enough, if he's quick enough. He gives us that different dimension. Um, but uh, with these young, quick uh, forwards, uh, outside uh, winger style forwards that we're signing or trying to sign, where does that leave Tyler Burry? Uh, obviously, he had his problems uh, earlier in the season. Uh, doing stupid stuff online, filming videos, which if you're going to do something wrong, don't film yourself doing it. That's the height of stupidity, but uh, are we looking at uh, replacements for people? Bennett, apparently, I'm not sure, but his contract might be up at the end of the season. I haven't heard anything about him re renewing his contract. Now he's free to speak to people if he is out of contract from January. Are they going to move on from Mason Bennett? I mean, we had this. He, he said in an interview the other day, he's grateful for Gary Ratford and Millwall for restarting his career after the incidents at Derby. But he, he gets injured all the time. It's, it's uh, when he he's all right, but we need more. We need more. Not you don't have to be perfect, but we need more. We need more from the people that we've got. You've only got 11 players on the pitch. And we need, if we get 10% more from everyone on every one of those 11 players, we're finishing in the top two. It's little bits that we need to, to move on and push on. And hopefully you hope that you can get that from the players that we have. But it looks like... Um, Maybe we can't. Maybe we're going to have to move a few players on. And these players that are coming in now, Imaku, looking at Saki, Josh Kia, other players. Maybe something switched in the um, scouting network and we, we're trying a few different things out. But um, interesting to see if this happens. But... Uh, this is, uh, I know we've just been speaking about this for about 10 minutes now. Remember, this this could all just be nonsense and garbage and just paper talk from Alan Nixon, who used to write for The Sun, I don't know if he still does, but he now basically sells transfer gossip on a Patreon website. So he makes money out of this, so he, he needs to literally farm this 
and get this going. And he knows that Millwall fans are interested in this stuff. They want to know if if or will Millwall sign any any uh, players. So maybe they are looking to do this deal, but Millwall aren't involved. But he throws Millwall's name in there, so he knows he can get all the Millwall fans involved. Because who did he name in this story? He named. Sheffield, there was like Sheffield Wednesday, Ipswich, uh, us, Hull. So you got five different clubs there, and all those different fans will be looking at this, clicking on on stuff, getting the ad dollars from all that. So maybe it's something, maybe it's nothing here. But he seems to be a decent player. Um, I think he's a, obviously a lot better option uh, outside right than uh, Vogel Summer, but. Why has why has um Rowett been playing Vogel Summer there when Vogel Summer should be understudying Bradshaw or even playing ahead of Bradshaw at a centre forward role? You got who you got? You got Shackleton and Callum Styles and Honeyman. But we're not gonna play them there. It just seems with this change of formation, we've just run off completely in the other direction in terms of players that we're trying to sign now. So, interesting stuff ahead for Millwall, I think. Now, I was telling you, I was probably boring you with the details of the FA Youth Cup game. And uh, as expected, I don't know about you, but I expected this. I, I, Probably thought it'd be around about three or four nil. It was a lot worse, a little bit worse than that. Uh, it was six nil. So the game was played this afternoon in uh, pissing down, rainy conditions. I did expect to get the news that the game was called off because of the bloody rain. Now so they already moved it three times. So, but here we go. This is from onlinegooner.com. There's a few, a lot of Arsenal fans there. Um, probably a few meal as well. Um, so yeah, it was six zero. Uh six zero. Uh they were three nil up within thirty minutes Arsenal were, so it was always gonna be a tough task. Um in the under eighteens they literally have uh gathered players from all around the world. Um so I'm not gonna read all of this nonsense because it's from the, the uh, opposition viewpoint. I'm just gonna point out uh, is their biggest win in the competition since beating Crawley 9-0 back in 2003. Uh, it was a strong gunner side, which was captained by Bradley Ibrahim, who Arteta included in his squad in the Europa League game. Um, and it also featured Kozia Dubry, who played in Saturday's 2-0 defeat against Juventus at, at the Emirates. So there you go. Um, that's how strong it was. It's players who were literally knocking on the first team. Or there or thereabouts. This is under 18s. This isn't under 21s. This is under 18s. The closest we've got is Romain Essé, who uh, started against Bromby like a couple of weeks ago. So... Um, Yeah, it was 3-0 after half an hour. I think it was 3-0 at half time. They they changed changed it around uh in the second half. They moved it through the front players around. And they and then they ended up 6-0, so there you go. Um there was a bit of a set to. Um bit of a argy bargy, not not nothing serious. Uh, booking for each side, and uh, yeah, six nil. So there you go. Um, shows the golfing class, but uh, what can you do? Hopefully, we get a. Uh, would have been nice to have, to actually play this at the Emirates, but what can you do? Now we are going to finish with this from RealFC. They've been doing this thing now. So obviously every month um Steve Kavanagh puts out a monthly statement 
They've been doing meal support of the month as well. Even though it's December, and December is literally nearly finished, 19th of December, we've got November's. I don't know if that's a typo. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. November's meal support of the month is Mel Bingham. Uh, congratulations to Mel Bingham, who's been voted as meal support of the month for November 2022. Mel earns the award from her fellow fans for her outstanding work in organising the Lions Remembrance Day commemorations year after year, with record figures being raised towards the Royal British Legion. Uh, enjoy it, Mel, if you have earned it, indeed. So there you go. Mel Bingham, free cheers for Mel Bingham, man. And on that note, thank you for watching, and goodbye.